Okay, do you want to turn on the little spotlight? You turned it off. No? We got the mirror? Okay. Okay, guys, hey, welcome back. Um, talking to my camera guy here. This is uh, my grandson decided to get a model in here for you guys to see. We've been working on mannequins, working on mannequins, and just basically you've got to see the natural hair growth as well. So um, I, I'm hoping that you can see on his, sorry about that, one of our little timers went off for no reason. Um, you can see where the parietal line is at. And his hair is cut specifically right to the parietal line. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take it to the lower ridge for you to for you to also see that. But what I want you to notice, this is where the cowlicks are. See, natural hair growth has a natural direction to it. And as we told you before, once we take this off, you're going to see the growth pattern along the lower nape, right at that area, again, behind the ear. So I'm going to get, and I've shared with you before, I prefer my Oster Clipper. I love this thing. Uh, it's going to cut right through. You saw the other one kind of, um, when I did that first crew cut on the mannequin, it was kind of fighting me a little bit. This thing don't fight. It just does it for you. So I love it. Uh, the blades are very expensive, so always clean them afterwards. Make sure that everything is, is organized for yourself, but the blades, instead of guards, you have your blades. All right, so uh, best investment ever. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start at the flat part of the head. His hair just combs up, so I don't have to worry about clipping it. Uh, this is how we've been cutting it in the past. So we're gonna take it. You're going to brace, bring it from the perimeter line up to the parietal line. Now one thing I want you to notice, this flat part is going straight up. I'm not angling it into it. I'm going straight up to the parietal line. And I'm actually just going straight up. Remember the other one we were carving out? This is going to go straight up because we're taking it we already know we're taking it to the parietal line. Now I'm being cautious here because I want this hair just above the parietal line to be a little bit longer. You notice this clipper's a little louder too. That's that little motor driven in it. So I'm gonna use my finger to pull his hair down, his ear down to travel around it. I know some people do this. You can do either one. Depends on how it grows. Now this is a three and a half that I'm using on him. So it's coming in, <laughs> yeah, three and a half. So it's coming in a little tighter. So he grows nicely in the back. So he grows towards, towards the ear over here. It doesn't grow up, it lays down real nice. He's got a real nice growth pattern. So it makes it a little bit easier. That on video, okay, I'm stuck here. Hang on a minute. <laughs> on the, there. Okay, so I'm going to comb this down, pull this up at the parietal line. But you can see now, as I pull it up, I hope you can see that forward growth pattern in this area. Why are you laughing? See, this is what happens when you take care of family. They drive you nuts. I always tell my students, don't charge family, don't charge friends. We're going to talk about you anyway. Okay, now see that forward growth pattern, which is a little bit different than the other side. The other side goes straight down. And because I know exactly where that parietal line is at, I'm not guessing. Now, the thing about clipper cutting, I want to show you something. Okay, if I wanted to do a mohawk, there's that area behind the ear. There's this area behind the ear. And do you see where our mohawk is centered right at? That's a perfect, perfect measurement. If you know where the area behind the ear is at on each side, you've got a really, really good start on your mohawk. Uh, we're not gonna do that on him. I'm gonna shift his head forward a little bit. Now he grows again to the side, grows nicely. He's got a really good growth pattern there.
So now I've taken, taken off the majority of the hair. What I'm going to do now, and this is what I recommend that you do, look at it in the mirror. When you get real close, now I'm going to show you things that I'm seeing in the mirror that you're probably seeing on film. Do you see where this is a little bit lighter? In order to make the rest of it blend, I'm going to bend. That's why you see barbers do that. And I'm going in a different direction. I'm pulling the skin. A lot of that is because of indentations. There's indentations on a natural scalp. And you're going to go in different directions to clean that up. Start looking at people with fades. I saw one yesterday and you could really see some dark lines in there where somebody doesn't think. See me looking at it just to look at it. Yeah, that's better. I see a little bit of a dark spot on this side. And that's how you get rid of those. That's the, this is the finishing touches. This is the polish into the cut. Normally, you're going to do this with curly hair. The curly hair is going to grow in all different directions. I'm going to pull this up a bit. And you're going to see that blend is much nicer. Now, I'm going to change my blade. And I'm going to go with a zero. And actually, it's a number one, but that's all right. That'll work. All right, so now what I'm going to do is again at the parietal line because I know where I'm at. There's your parietal line. I'm going to take my comb and I'm going to bring it out to blend. And I'm holding it at a slight angle because I want it to gradually become longer. Again, we're carving into the parietal line. And even when I hold it vertically, do you notice that it's at an angle from where I'm cutting? Do you see that? Alright, I've got a little bit of a long one right there. Clean that up. Again, to the parietal line. Very careful. Now, when I told you about the clipper staying on the comb, you'll notice Next again. Yeah. Okay. Edit that out. You'll notice that the clipper is at an angle. If I take it up in this form, I'm going to cut hair. The clipper has no brains. You've got to watch that blade to see what is what and where it's taking it off. Okay, stop moving, please. And sometimes you have to tell your client, stop moving. When you're working on these really intricate spots. Because now what I'm doing is I'm carving in to blend. My cord keeps getting stuck. Okay, I'm going to remember side to center, side to center. Again, take it, turn it at an angle. Okay, don't cut. If they're moving, don't cut. Now, remember, it stays on the blade. If I had kept it in this form on the blade, I would have created a line right here. So watch your clipper. Make sure that it's only cutting the hair that you want it to cut. And it's best that the clippers stay above the comb, in other words, up on the comb, as opposed to down on the comb. Because that's when you're going to create those bald lines or those very uh, bad haircut lines on the bottom there. All right, so now that we're at the rounded area, I'm going to tilt this head forward because I want to see it. I'm going to then subsection, there's the vertex. So I'm going to cross over the vertex on this side and then cross over back the other way. It's going to create a slight V in there and then we're going to get rid of that. All right, and I'm trying to do this so you can see it. I'm going to take it, well, you're still not going to be able to see it as clear. That's what I want you to, but I also don't want to take off anything we don't need to take off. So, okay, let me, I'm just going to have to do it because uh, still a little bit of a corner, a little bit of a hard line right there, and that's all I'm getting rid of. So I'm just barely using, I'm just using this part of my clipper at this point, not the whole blade. 
So I'm going in and just, just using this little edge right here to clean that up. So I have my clipper at a slight angle, slight angle, see it? And that's all I'm doing is I'm carving into it like that. And these are the polishings that you do. This isn't just taking a clipper and going up and then trying to cut it with your hands up on top. These are all barbering techniques, by the way. So you're not just learning how to cut. There's, there's some barbering techniques here. Okay, so we're pretty much done with that right now. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to show you how to trim. Oster, like I told you, I'm an oster person. I prefer it. I'm going to put my finger on his ear right there. Now, here is the trick. Your hand becomes a pivot. That is a circle there. I admire these people that just get in there and make that per perfect circle. That's not me. All right. So I always use my hand or my knuckle to help me pivot that clipper around. So I'm going to shift his head over so I can see it. I'm going to hold it down. And I'm using, actually I'm using the comb to help me pivot around it. This is where I do. I have to bend his ear just a bit. But you notice I'm resting it on my finger, my index finger. And I hope you can see that. Because I'm it's off to the side of it. Wow. Alright. And then push the ear back. Use my hand and pivot. Alright, we're at the area. Now this is where you know where you're at. The tragus, remember, point of measure. You have point of measure for everything. The tragus is there. That's where you start your guide in the back. That's why you keep them even on both sides. These are little tricks of the trade that people just normally do without thinking anymore. All right, so I'm going to shift his head. I know where the tragus is at. Coming in at a slight angle. And then I'm taking it down to the end of it. All right, I'm going to turn him again. And normally I walk around instead of turning him. There's the tragus. There's my guide. Shift his head and take it all the way down. Now we've got a pretty good clue. Now the angle, of course, if somebody wants a rounded neck, you're going to get rid of this corner. He's very fine with a squared off neck because both sides grow in the same direction. So he doesn't have that problem. I need to make sure that I'm even. So I'm going to start at the center. Bring it down, and sometimes to clean those little fine hairs, you have to bring it up. Be careful that you don't do this, because you'll cut off more. Bring it up, then take it out. Now I've got a guide. And again, I'm bracing on top, because if he sneezes, if he hiccups, we have a problem. There's a film on um, Big Bang Theory. And the blonde is cutting Sheldon's hair. And when she does the neck, at one point he giggles because it tickled him. Well, yeah, there ends up being a shave spot there. That's why you brace. She wasn't bracing, she was just cutting. But that is exactly why you brace. Now, I will tell you though, that accident became his fault and not necessarily hers. So you can see that that rests real nice along there. And it's a, it's a decent cut. Okay, I feel like I need to take off just a scotch more. That's where you stand behind it, look at it, see what you got. There. Looks good. All right, so the top now, again, what did we learn on the, on the 180? You're going to be using the 180 a whole lot when you're doing short hair. It becomes a common factor with it. And uh, now you know that I'm going to use my shear because I'm wetting it. I never use my clippers on wet hair. The most it'll be is on damp hair. Now his hair has been continually cut front to back. And you can see that it stands up. That's why it stands up. I'm going to come back around here, travel around it. Keep spraying a little bit. Now, remember that forward growth? You can really see it now, and I'm really going to have to clean that up. So, because this grows differently than the other side, and that's the human factor. That's what you're going to find. So, 
you know, we weren't going to take care of models till later, but this opportunity came up because normally we just wanted to do um, just uh, haircuts on the <coughs> on mannequins. All right, so now this is where scissor over comb comes in. You see this area on this side? It grows forward. So because it grows forward, it's going to go up. The other side grows differently. So I still want to keep them both the same. So okay. he wants me to turn the fan on. You got to keep your customers happy. All right, so there you go. Just gently pick up only what I need. And you'll see that that's much cleaner as well. Even though that grows uh, it, uh, nicely enough to go up, and it's not a problem. <laughs> okay, now this grows down. But we're still going to get it to do the same thing. Scissor over comb. Again, the comb is coming straight up. I'm not curving it around. It's coming straight up, not curving around the head. So we still have it right at the parietal line, slightly longer. And this is what I wanted you to definitely practice, so I forgot to clean up this side with the clipper. I'll clean it up in a little bit. All right, so we're gonna come up. And you see that this, on the, at the crown, slightly travels down to the lower ridge. You see that? So at the crown, you will travel down slightly lower. Why would, can anybody guess what the reason for that is? What, what is it that we're trying to avoid creating a problem with back here at the vertex? Colics, exactly. Uh, the colics are what are gonna drive you nuts. The colics are gonna you know, people are going to say, well, I don't want it to stick up. I don't want it. I don't want it. Okay, well, and uh, always remember, dry your shear. And you always, you know, stroke the back of it. You don't want to stroke the blade. So dry your shear. All right. So right at the, where he's got his little calyx, and the hair's a little fuller there, I'm going to now take my texture shear. Your texture shear is going to give it direction. I want this to go to the center. One, two, three, four. There, it's doing it. I want this little area right here that tends, is kind of trying to grow forward, whether I'm not sure if you can see it or not, but it's just little tiny hairs. So I want them to go back. One, two, three, four. And there you go. It'll move it for you. The teeth direct the hair. Just don't take too much off because then you're gonna have a serious problem. All right, in this area, we're a little bit full. I'm going to shift his head over, and I'm going to go one, two, three, four. There, now that cleaned that up. I've got a little bit of a thick spot here, and I'm just going to hold the comb vertically and just travel with it, just like I'm doing scissor over comb, and basically taking hair off, and now it makes it lay much nicer. Okay, to finish off the cut, now we're just going to do scissor over comb. And um, I, I do it front to back. Uh, I'm, I'm going to show you something. You can see that he's got some curl to his hair. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to comb it back. See how nice that lays? Whether you can see it through the mirror, but it lays nicely. All right? So there's two ways you can do this. You could either pick it up and cut it. And in this form, I'm, I'm going to be cutting it side to side to show you the difference. My preference is usually on the top, I always go scissor over comb because it's faster. I let my shear help me, but I'm going to show you what happens when you cut it side to side. <clears throat> and we always cut his front to back, and I can see my guide, by the way, I'm not just cutting to cut, I have a guide that I'm following, and again, you've, we've done this several times already, so you know what side to side is, and you can see that it's laying down, 
it's not perking up anymore. It just kind of falls off to the side. All right. Now, this is what I want you to see. Now it's starting to pop up. Now where we want it to lay down, and you can see those little hairs pop up. And you can see folds in the hair. You can see the movement in the hair. You see the wave in the hair, all of that. Now, I'm going to cut it the length that I want, and I'm going to cut it front to back extreme hard lines going front to back. Again, scissor over comb. The reason I don't like to pick it up and do this is I want you to notice something. I'm picking up this hair on this side, this hair on this side is traveling to the center. The hair at the center is going to be the shortest. So what I like to do is, and you know, people will have their arguments about that. Well, you know, make thinner partings, all of that stuff. Uh, I just find that this is faster, it works better, and I've actually been in salons uh, that I've done demo cuts for and they've never seen scissor over comb like this, which doesn't make sense to me because they've been taught always to use your fingers to put it up. These are all barbering techniques. You can do the same thing. So what I'm going to do, and you're going to see it lay better, is I'm doing, and I, I'm following a guide, I mean I do see my guide right there. And I'm traveling over. Now, this is experience. This is not just taking it and do it. That's why I'm telling you to practice with a mannequin. Look at the difference. You can already see the difference. A hair is laying down. It's got some nice movement to it. We're going to have a little corner back here. And I'm going to get rid of it. So that it lays down nicely for him. And you can see this side and the other side. Just lays, we don't have those little things sticking up, and they will. They will stick up. You see these little ones from, from before. And you can see it, the hair just doesn't do quite the same thing. So scissor over comb, front to back. And I'm traveling now to the parietal line, bring that hair over. And again, like I said, this takes practice. It takes experience doing this. If you want to hold it with your hands, please take very thin partings when you do that. Now he's laying real nice. Nothing is sticking up. Now I have a little bit of a wave right there and I'm going to show you how to get rid of that. Okay, I want to take care of this corner here. I have a little corner in the back. corner right here, just kind of blending it in, cut and comb, cut and comb, so that it fits nicely. Now, we're talking about this little wave right there that's happening. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it forward, and this time I am going to use my fingers. I have a corner, take it off, comb it back, lays a little nicer. And this again is where your texture shear comes in. Your texture shear, let me see how much time I've got. I have about five minutes. And I wish I could. Uh, we may on our next video show you how to clean up his beard. All right, so you see center, center. I want it to go to the center. And you see that line starting to disappear. I'm going to come back over this way. Using the combs, the comb of the texture shear, to go to the center. Again, much, much smoother. It elevated it up a little bit. I'm going to use a texture shear in the back. I've got some little ends that are sticking up. again I want it to go to the center so with the texture shear I'm directing it 
to the center. He's got enough hair for 36 people, so he's not going to have a problem with his hair as far as how it, you know, uh, how much I take off. I mean, I'm not going to make him bald with it. But one thing I want you to notice that as I came to the parietal line here, the hair goes back real nice because it grows in that direction. I had to, I had to take it. When I come to the parietal line on this side, I have to make it go back. It wants to dance forward. So I'm going to give it a few strokes with the texture shear and then it goes up and back exactly the way I wanted to. He's got his cowlick right here. So I want that cowlick to do what I want it to do. So I'm going to take it. I want it to lay down. It went real close to the scalp right there. And now it's laying down for me. So um, there's so many things that you can do with scissor over comb cutting. So many things that you can clean up. Go around, use my finger, half circle. You see my fingers holding the ear and serving a dual purpose, allowing me to create that half circle. And here I'm just kind of eyeballing it. Another thing that uh, you learn with the clipper cutting is lining up the hair. And brace before you do it. You see that nice clean corner that we have now. And some people like the front of their head lined up. I'm going to line up his other side here. Turn his head a little bit so you can see it. Pull the skin. Line it up. And you're going to do that with your, with your uh, trimmer. Now, the thing that I like about the T-blade is I can go around the ear so much easier because that blade runs out a bit. With the regular blades, they're real close and you, you have to shift the clipper just a bit. A T-blade, just uh, to me, that's what they're called, is a T-blade can do so much more. But anyways, we want to thank you for coming. Thank my grandson for allowing us to do this. Come back in a few and uh, we're going to show you how to clean up his beard. All right, take care. God bless.